Unit 3, Lesson 1, Fossils. Fossils, they are traces and remains of old living organisms that are preserved in sedimentary rocks. It means that there were uh, old living organisms that lived uh, since about millions or more uh, millions of years, and they found those living organisms in a type of rock called sedimentary rocks. We have two types of fossils, which are trace and remain. Uh, the trace is the activity of the living organism during its life. Trace indicate the activity of the living organism, of the old living organism during its life. For example, the trace of dinosaurs' footprint, it makes its footprint during um, its life, or the worms' tunnel, the worms make made tunnel uh, where they were alive, so they are traces which indicates their activity during life. But the remains, they are the trace that indicates the remains of once old living organism. What is remained from their bodies after dead? After the living organism is dead, uh, there are remains from this from their bodies, such as the remains of sharp teeth or the remains of dinosaurs' skull. Okay, fossil of complete body. It's a type of fossil, but first we should uh, talk about the types of fossils. Here we have four types of fossils, which are fossil of complete body and cast fossil, mold fossil, petrified fossil. First, we'll talk about the fossil of complete body. Here, it's the first type of fossil. They are a type of fossil which was formed as a result of the rapid burying of the organism as soon as it died. They were buried immediately or very quickly in a medium and this medium prevent its decomposition prevent the living organism uh, from decomposition after death, such as snow or amber. So uh, when the scientists found this living organism, they found their bodies with the whole shape and the all details of the body, uh, as they are sleeping, not dead. Why? Because the amber or snow prevent their bodies from decomposition, such as the mammoth fossil or amber fossil. What is the amber? Amber, it is a solidified resonant matter which was secreted by pine trees. Uh, there is a type of trees called pine tree and this pine tree uh, is secreting a type of resonant matter and when this resonant matter is solidified, it's a thing or called amber. Okay, and the second type of um, fossil is the cast fossil, uh, but we a uh, hollow cast or cast fossil it is external details, external details of the living organism body, uh, such as if we put a shell here, or as the face mask, which has the external details of the face. So the cast fossil, it has the external details, not internal. Uh, we wrote it in the booklet. Uh, so internal, make it external, solid cast is the external details of the fossil. It has the external details of the body, like the ammonite fossil, pneumolite fossil, triplite fossil. Then we have a petrified fossil. Petrified fossils, they are uh, the second type of fossils, and they are fossils in which minerals replace the organic matter of, our of organism which means the organic matter or the natural matter of the organism are replaced by minerals or mineral salt. So the from outside, the shape has no change, so the shape without any change from outside, but from inside, the organic matter is replaced with minerals, such as the dinosaur's tooth or the dinosaur's eggs and petrified wood. Petrified wood, they are fossils which are formed as a result of replacing the organic matter or the natural matter of wood by silica. Silica is a type of mineral, part by part. So they give us details about the life of once old, once an old plant, which means if we saw a petrified wood, we know that there was an old plant in this area. Petrification, it is the process of replacing the wood material, the organic material of wood, by silica. We call it petrification. So it gives us petrified wood. Index fossil. What what is the index fossil? Index fossil. They are fossils of organisms that had lived for short period, uh, but they have wide geographic distribution, uh, which means they lived for a short time, but they were um, spreading uh, or uh, has wide geographic distribution in many areas or many places. 
then they became extinct. The third type of fossils is mold. What is mold? Mold is the opposite to cast. We said cast is the external details, but here mold is internal details. So here we should write, instead of external, it's internal details of a skeleton. It gives us the internal details of the body, of the uh, old living organism, such as the molds of ferns or fish mold. Give reason, amber is considered a suitable medium for formation of complete body fossil because amber prevents the decomposition of the living organism because it preserves the bodies of insects from decomposition, prevent its decomposition. Uh, although petrified wood looks like rock, they are considered as fossils. They are not rocks. They look like rocks, but they are not rocks. They are fossils. Why? Because they give us the details about the life of ones and all the plant. As we said before, once we see the petrified wood, we know there was an old plant in this area. The area of petrified forest in Cotamea is called the wood mountain. Why we, we call it a uh, wood mountain? Because it contains petrified woods which look like rocks. So here the four types of, um, of fossils. As we said, we have four types of fossils according to the way of formation or preservation and they were fossil of complete body, cast, fossil, mold, fossil, petrified wood. Note, in, s in the sedimentary rocks, mold or cast can be formed for once an old living organism, which means that sedimentary rocks has the mold or cast fossil. Okay, but the fossil of complete body in amber or snow and petrified wood, we, as we said, replacing the organic matter with uh, minerals. There was a living organism, old living organism, called Archaeopatrix. Archaeopatrix fossil is considered a link between reptiles and birds. This living organism was the link between the reptiles and birds. So it was the first living organism with wings, the first bird. We have here evolution of uh, vertebrates as follow. First, there were the fish in the sea, then we have the amphibians, then reptiles, then mammals. That's the evolution or the steps uh, for the living organism. Suitable conditions for fossil formation or preservation, not any living organism. Um, when it died, we have a fossil of it. We don't have a fossil of each dead living organism. There are conditions to make a fossil. There are conditions uh, for making a fossil for a living organism, for a dead living organism. Such as, number one, presence of hard skeleton of organism. The organism must, must have a hard skeleton. Number two, the organism body must be buried immediately after death in like snow or amber to prevent it from decomposition. Number three, the medium in which the um, living organism is dead must have mineral materials to replace the organic materials of the old organism. What is the importance of fossils? Fossils has many importance such as its age determination of sedimentary rocks. When we find, when we found um, a fossil for old living organism, from its age we know the age of the rock, of the sedimentary rock. Figuring out the fill environment uh, such as from um, from the fossil, we can know what environment it was in the past, such as if we found a um, fossil for nemolite fossil, like that, ammonite or nemolite fossil, we know that uh, this place was sea, was a sea. Three, studying life evolution, to know the evolution of the living organism. Number four, petroli petroleum exploration. Petroleum exploration, like what? If they found a certain types of microscopic fossils in a place, they know that this place has petrol, such as foraminifera here, foraminifera and radiolaria. Foraminifera and radiolaria, if they found it in a place, they know that this place has fossil. Okay. Importance of fossil record. The fossil record um, it indicates the extinction and evolution of organisms. We may found 
in a fossil, a fossil for a living organism that we don't have it uh, these days, like the dinosaur, like the mammoth, we don't have dinosaur or mammoth. So we know that there were living organisms, but they are different types or other types of living organisms in the past, but they are extinct now. Or the evolution of the living organism, like there are types of living organisms in, in, the, um, in the past, they have a certain shape, but these days they have different shapes. Tripolite is from the invertebrate that appeared in sea. Tripolite. Uh, fish were the first vertebrates. So tripolite wo uh, was invertebrates. It has no vertebral column, but the fish was the first that has a vertebral column. And as we said, archaeopteryx link between reptiles and birds. And it appears after, after fish, it was the first bird. Mammoth is from the mammals that appeared after reptiles. Mammoth is from the mammal, appears after reptiles. Listen to extinction. Extinction means uh, dying out of all members of species of living organism. All the members died. The moment of extinction means it is the date of the death of death of the last individual of that species. If we have a certain species and the last individual, the last one of them, the moment it dies, we call it the moment of extinction because all the members are are died. Factors causing extinction of species. Uh, scientists said that we have five mass extinctions, but since uh, the life establishment, since the beginning of life, we have five mass extinctions, and they believe that we have the sixth extinction these days, where the rate of extinction is 40 times larger than the normal rate of extinction. Causes of old or mass extinctions. Old means the extinctions in the past, like millions ago, millions of years ago. Like what we have series, um, different series uh, for the reasons uh, why the living organism is extinct in the past, but we are not um, making sure if any one of them is a true one. So we have three theories here. Number one, meteorite impacts with Earth. Meteorite uh, impacts with the Earth and so um, many species died. Number two, the onset of a long glacial age or ice age. Number three, emission of seismic gases from active volcanoes. This is the three theories why uh, the, um, we have mass extinction in the past. And also we have causes of recent extinction. Causes of recent extinctions means why um, there are living organisms are extinct these days. Number one, destroying the natural habitat or the natural um, environment where they are living. Number two, the overhunting, when the hunters hunt uh, a certain type of species or a certain living organism um, with a high rate. Number three, environmental pollution. Four, climatic change and natural disasters. Those are the reasons for the recent or the new extinction. Because we have industrial revolution, which means we have uh, a lot of industries, it causes the extinction of living organisms. Examples of environmental pollution, like uh, acidic rains, falls, which destroy the forests and trees. Acidic rains, which means that the rains has the result of industry, has um, the wastes of industry in the air, and these wastes are mixed with the rains, and we call it acidic rains. Number two, chemical insecticides that break down the food chain. Number three, oil leaks in oceans, the oil um, from the ships in the ocean, which causes the death of marine birds. Climatic change and the natural disasters. Natural disasters are considered one of the causes that lead to the extinction of species, such as um, some of the disasters are related to the climatic change, such as drought, which uh, means there are no wa there is no water, tornadoes, floods, lightning, torrents, storm, raising the temperature of the Earth's planet. All of those natural disasters causes extinction. Other disasters aren't related to the climatic change. They are disasters, but not because of the climatic change, like the earthquakes, volcanoes, high marine uh, tide, like the tsunami. Extinct and endangered species. First, the extinct species. We have some extinct species in all the time, like millions uh, of years ago, like the dinosaur and mammoth. And here we have 
recent extinct species in recent times they extinct but um, not from millions of years in the recent times in the new times like dodo bird like quagga uh, passenger pigeon and uh, Tasmanian cat or wild cats Australian wild cat golden frog causes of extinction for the dodo bird for example the dodo bird was an easy target for hunters because it has um, a small wing, small size wings, and its body was larger than its wings. The wings, uh, its body was large, but the wings were small, so it can't fly. Short legs, so it can't run fast. So the dodo bird was an easy target for hunters because uh, it has a small size wings, and it can't fly, and it has short legs, so it can't run fast. Passenger pigeon, cutting the oak. Passenger pigeon, uh, the reason of its extinction, cutting the oak and beech trees. There, uh, there were two types of trees where they were used to build its nest, uh, but the human cut those trees so it can't find a place to live. So it is a reason of its extinction. The second reason is mass hunting of birds or overhunting for it. Number three. Weak rates of reproduction where the female lays only one egg each spring. Quagga. Why the quagga ex is extinct? Because of the overhunting or continuous hunting. The Tasmanian cat, the hunting by peasants means the farmer. Uh, farmers were hunting uh, the Tasmanian cat because it uh, eats or kill the sheep and chickens. Number five, golden frog. It has disappeared since May 1989 uh, and it has not been seen since this time. It just disappeared. The endangered species. We finished the extinct species in all time and recent time. Now we will talk about the endangered species, which means the species which um, almost are going to extinct. Uh, it is a list issued by the International Union for Conservation of Nature every year and it includes the endangered species examples of some endangered species we have about 5,000 endangered species um, examples for them the panda bear dinosaurs bald eager, eagle eagle bird, safaris plant first the panda bear causes of endanger why it's endanger because of the weak rates of reproduction rareness of bamboo plant which is its only food and bamboo plant doesn't uh, grow plasm or grow except once every 100 years the rhinoceros was as why they are endangered because its habitat is being transformed into cultivated land uh, number two overhunting for it um, to use its horns in some medical uh, purposes bald eagle the reason feeding on fish that contain poisonous matter that is being dumped in lakes and rivers. Apis bird loss of its nests after building the high dam. When they build the high dam, its nests were uh, gone, so it can't find a place to live. Papyrus plant drawing off swamps or uh, lakes where they grow. Effect of extinction on the uh, ecological equilibrium or uh, the effect of extinction for the environment the word or the concept ecosystem means the place which has living and non-living things living organisms and non-living things we call it ecosystem uh, in any ecosystem there is a series of reactions happening among its individuals and each living organism has an, a role on a role in transferring energy throughout the food chain which means in each ecosystem there is a living organism and there is a larger one eating the smaller living organism uh, for example the plant is eaten um, or insect eating the plant and a frog eats the insect and there is a snake which eats the frog so we call it food chain and there are a reaction between them which uh, this reaction make a balance between the um, components of ecosystem what is the food chain? Food chain means the path of energy that transmit from a living organism to another e living organism in ecosystem. As we said, if the insect is the plant, so the energy will be transferring from the plant to the insect. If the frog is the, uh, is the insect, so the energy will be transferring from the frog from the insect to the frog. 
ecosystem is classified into two types, uh, which is central ecosystem and complicated ecosystem. Central ecosystem, it has few members, and if, one if a certain type of members is lost, so the ecosystem will be affected, like the desert. But complicated ecosystem, it has many uh, types, or mil maybe millions types of species uh, in it. So if a type is lost, one type of them is lost or absent, so it will not be affected because there are many of them, like the tropical forest. So central ecosystem, it has few members and it is affected by the absence of one of them, but complicated ecosystem, it has multiple members, so it's not affected. How can we protect the living organism from extinction? Number one, making rules to organize and to control the hunting uh, in land or sea or air, especially for the rare types. Number two, increasing the awareness about the importance of natural life. Number three, rearing and reproducing the endangered species. Number four, making gene bank for, mu for much endangered species. Uh, number five, establishing natural protectorate areas. The natural protectorate is a safe area, safe natural area to protect the natural endangered species in their homeland, which means uh, if an animal can only live in, um, in snow, so we make a protectorate in snow, we can't uh, make a protectorate for it in desert, we make a protectorate in their homeland. The important wireless protectorates, number one, Bluestone protectorate in USA protect the gre uh, gray bear. Panda protectorate in China it protects the panda bear. Ras Muhammad protectorate it's in South Sinai in Egypt. The protected kinds in Ras Muhammad it uh, has rare species of coral leaf and colored fish, and numerous of rare plant and animals. 